<laughs> I got you. Well, good morning. What's on your mind? Uh, I, I would just, I mean, what, what uh, religion are you specifically? Yeah, so I'm Christian. Okay, nice. A DLC religion. I like that. Okay. DLC religion. Well, you know, yeah. You, you know what I mean by that, right? I'm assuming you're thinking we're probably tacked on to some other type of religion. Well, yeah, most of about. the stories, like I mentioned earlier, are, are borrowed from previous religions. You said they want to give me uh, some of the notes and then put it in as their own homework, but they, they got yes. it right, right? So do you want to give me an example of what you think is something that uh, Christians oh, took from do, another religion? I mean, the Garden of Eden is a good one, right? Yeah, so the idea here is that um, there are elements similar to a Garden of Eden in other ancient and Eastern cultures, but mm. um, to show that there are some type of shared concepts when it comes to um, creation, deity, stuff like that, that doesn't mean that one ripped off the other. Well, wait, so some of these... They got everything wrong, so just not the part... No, it doesn't. Soul, nope. mm -mm. No, I don't think... My... So their gods are false, right? I think mm, I wouldn't even go that far. So it depends on how we're um, how we're articulating their gods being false. Well, so as a Christian, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna right? answer your questions before you ask the next one. So oh, I already is know that, where you're going with good? it. I mean, well, wait, if, if you if you interrupt me, I'm kicking you off. I'm not doing this. Um, I've had good people who are atheists, or I had just had a good conversation with a Muslim. He didn't interrupt me. We had a good chat. If you're not gonna extend that level of courtesy <laughs> to me, you're gone. You. Are you gonna level? Are you gonna extend that level of courtesy to me? Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Then awesome. I think we'll, we'll, if that's the case, I think we might be able to have a good chat. So um, C.S. Lewis remarks that one of the things about uh, being, being Christian to him, I'll, I'll kind of paraphrase it, is that um, as an atheist, he had to say all religions are just fundamentally at their core um, pretty much completely wrong. But as a Christian, he doesn't have to say that. He can affirm that there are things that are true, good, and beautiful. Um, again, this is me paraphrasing. He doesn't get, uh, spell it out in exactly this way. Um, he can say that if things are true or good or beautiful. Um, about these other religions. I don't know if he uh, loves and um, yeah, beautiful and, and good and stuff like that. That's kind of me sprinkling in some other thought. But the idea he expresses is that he can he can recognize the aspects of truth in these other religions. And I can I can do the same thing. So I can look at something even like a Canaanite religion, which I you know I'm not going to affirm the truth of Canaanite religion, right? That's something that um, the Israelites were not supposed to, to follow and worship. But there are aspects of the Canaanite religion that I would want to affirm the truth of. So there's a there's a high god. There's a divine council. There are you know things along those lines. Um, and I can I can point to different religious traditions, and I can say, hey, you, you have something right here. You, there's a core that you've you've perceived this. Um, you don't need to get, completely throw away all these concepts. Um, and I would point out that this is how Paul this is how Paul witnesses to people in the New Testament. Paul goes to, if I remember correctly, I think it's um, Athens or something like that. And he's walking. He sees uh, he sees a um, a monument or an altar or something like that to the unknown god, and he starts from there. He says, okay, I'm here to tell you about this unknown god, and he um, incorporates the he incorporates writings from Greek writers in his articulation of the Christian message. So, no, I don't have to say that everybody's wrong. I don't have to say that everybody is just complete idiots and that all of humanity has just you know, really gone don gone down the uh, the toilet. And you know, intellectually, I can affirm that they they have things right. Gotcha. But would you agree that most people in their faith would agree that everyone else is has got it wrong, right? I mean, I don't, so I don't think so. I feel like most Christians, if oh, you're going to talk to, okay, so I'm a, I'm a Christian <laughs> academic. Christian most of the household. people, don't interrupt me. Are you going to keep interrupting me? No, you're good. I feel like, I feel here. like, okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll try to be a little bit more uh, charitable and understanding about the lag then. Um, my apologies. Um, so yeah, if you're going to ask me, do I think most Christians, if I was, if I was to sit down and, and explain the, the idea to them, hey, do you think every proposition in every other religious tradition is true? Um, whether or not they would, whether or not they would affirm that statement, that's a, that's a sociological claim that I just, I don't have, I don't have like a, a, a survey or a peer reviewed survey or something like that to assess that. I'm going to have to go off of my interactions with other Christians and going off my interactions with other Christians in my own life. I don't, the ones I know wouldn't affirm that. Now you say maybe my sample size isn't representative and that may be the case. I mean, like I'm, I'm I'm studying, uh, you know, theology on an academic level. I'm I'm not a lay person, but also I, I don't really care whether or not um, every Christian would agree with that because I think most Christians, including myself, get things wrong when it comes to theology. So it may just be that that's an area where most Christians need to be corrected on. Okay, we can move on from my point because it was more so just a comment. I don't really want to go over all the different plagiarisms that are within the Bible. No, I, okay, I, I, I see what you're saying about like uh, they can have certain elements of it, right? 
Um, mm-hmm. I, I would say that's a bit of a cop out uh, as far as it is is it just changing the notes and then saying and passing it off as your own work. Right. Well, I would say, I well, so wait, it. let's pause it's, this. No, no, let's pause it because you're, you're you're starting to preach. No, it's like, well, yeah, well, no, you're starting to you're starting oh, to make assertions. No, 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 listen, no, listen. yeah, you know, because you're making yeah, assertions yeah, and then so you're starting to articulate. Thing, huh? No, 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 no. You so you're making you're making an assertion, and then I want to respond to that assertion you've made. But before responding to that assertion, you're wanting to quickly move on to explaining why they did this. Now, I mean, if you want to, if you want to talk about um, your assertion that they stole things and they they changed the notes and you want to address the claim that that's a, a cop out okay yeah so let's let's like pick the topic you want to talk about let's just talk about uh, why did he invent evil right okay i don't think that god uh, invented evil so next question what do you mean by that do you think do you think he's all knowing i do think that god is all knowing okay so he knew that the devil would turn from him right uh, no, I'm an open theist. I don't think that God knows all few act- future actions so of free creatures, knowing. and that doesn't include that. He, that doesn't entail he's not all knowing. Because to say that a being is all knowing, I'm going to say that entails that he knows all true propositions. I don't think there are true propositions about future free creatures, such as the devil will do X. I don't think that was true. You know, let's say 500 years before the devil did that. I don't think the proposition the devil will do this is true. And this is a position that's well represented in the academic literature surrounding open theism. Now, I would point out that I can. I can. Uh, I don't have to go this open theist route to get out of this line of argument. I could do it a different way, but I'm an open theist, so I'm just going to be lazy and say, "Yeah, I don't. I don't. I'm inclined to think I don't think that God knew with certainty that the devil was going to do this. God, I think God so knew maybe that the devil except the parts that make him look bad. That's not what I said. And why don't you actually engage with my argument? So, you, do you, you think? Break, yeah, you would you agree? Then. Yeah. Okay. So, a being so is all knowing. Is that's exactly what I was about to say? A uh, being is all knowing is if we take a list of all the true propositions, all the propositions that are currently true. So let's let's say it's um, it's around two my time. You know, you said it was in the morning. Um, we'll say we'll just use X to represent now. So all the all the uh, propositions that are true at X. Okay, a being is all knowing at X. If at X, God, uh, that being knows all the true propositions. Right. That seems like a pretty reasonable definition. Would you agree? Um, I, I mean, I can make it even more simple. Why, why not just to say it's an adjective describing someone who is aware of everything? Yeah, so, but I'm, I'm trying to be more philosophically precise. That when we say aware of everything, um, I don't feel like that captures all the precision that we want to capture. It's not just that not? God is aware everything. of all the things that exist in the world. Yeah, so let me give you an example. So for one, if, if I use this argument, um, that's actually not going to, you're not going to be able to use that type of definition against me. Like the definition I'm providing is what I think you want to use to press against me in this type of argument. So what you, if you say, okay, God just has to be aware of everything. Well, in that case, God could be aware of of all the things that exist, so he's aware of them, he knows they exist, but that doesn't entail this additional claim that he knows all the things, uh, all the actions or all the events that those things are going to do. So by that very, I would say, too vague definition that you've provided, um, that's that's not going to be able to use to be pressed against me. So what I want to do is I want to give a more philosophically rigorous definition. Now, I, and, I, and in doing so, I'm creating the philosophical rigorous definition that I think you want to use against me. Right? I'm, I actually don't hold I mean, I'm to. I'm not trying to I, use anything against yeah. you. Oh, sure you are. Come on, let's let's be honest here. You you clearly uh, you have qualms against Christianity. You're up here trying to argue with me. Let's call a spade a spade. I'm not mad at you about it, but let's no, let's I mean, be no, honest. I'm you have arguments you want to run against, against me. You. I, that's just how I see it. I mean, if something's all knowing, you can't say it's all knowing up until the points that don't you know align with what you agree. But I'm not it's saying all that. It's everything. It's either everything or it's not. I, I I agree. I agree. So God knows everything, and what that. So let's so let's go with that. Um, God knows all true propositions, right? Now, personally, I I and actually my dissertation I tease out why. I I think this is a problematic um, uh, definition, but I'm just going to go with it for now, right? So let's say God, um, God knows everything. By that, I'm going to take that to mean God knows all true propositions, okay? So here's the thing. I'm going to affirm that under my model, I can affirm that God knows all true propositions, and then I'm going to say, like, God not knowing, you know, what action I'm going to do 40 years from now, that isn't that doesn't take away from his omniscience because in that list of propositions a list of true propositions which we said he knew exhaustively 
there's not a true proposition in there about James will do this 40 years from now. And so what, the way that the reason open theists have this you know, title of open theist is we think the, the future is open. It's not settled. There's not a complete list of facts about the world and how it's going to go. So I am affirming all, these, all the things that are true. I can say, yep, all these you know, propositions are true. God knows all of them. But there are some things that occur, which pre, uh, previous to them occurring, there was not a proposition uh, uh, of the likes that, you know, that actually or that event is going to occur. So this, this type of, oh, well, then God's not a knowing argument, that's not going to get anywhere with me. And again, this is a pretty standard open theistic position that's in the literature. Also, thanks to you for the person who sent Rose. I see you, Dylan. Thank you. It was kind of you. That was a, a wonderful mental gymnastics. I, I can tell that the school is, is, is it's coming through. There. Yeah, so why, don't you in, so why don't you engage with my arguments instead of insulting me? Because what I see is you're insulting me and you're mocking me because you're lost. It, it, no, no, you're lost because you don't know what to do right now. Because you're, you're saying, used to coming up. So it's word salad, sir. No, so this is what you're used to doing. You're used to coming up and having conversation no, with I've Christians who aren't theologically. religion ever. This is my first okay, time Okay, cool. Cool. Well, I'm glad you. I'm glad I could. This could be your first experience. I hope it humbles you. So here's what I think the problem is. Have you read any academic literature about these topics that you're actually trying to discuss? The I read the Bible itself. That's about it. That's why, why not I the okay. Yeah. Why, okay. Why, why yes. Do I need an alternative book. It's the one. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 God, so you're right? trying to. Yeah. So look, this is what's. This is what the problem is. You're trying to get up. And you're trying to debate and have an argument argument with me about a theological so topic. No, listen. I'm gonna. I can. You, I can. I can address it. No, listen. No, I, God, right? you know. You're. You I. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know of any Christian who thinks all true propositions in existence are contained in the Bible. And the fact that you're trying to oh, pivot this, I'm not gonna let you do it. I'm gonna keep pressing this. Right. You got up here thinking that. you were gonna be able to get me into a corner with these silly questions, and you're going up against someone who's not gonna let you box them into these little traps. So let's go back and let's address this claim of God. No. We, we are, dude. I've done this before. I know guys like you. I know how you try to go. You got up here and you started making pejorative claims about how, oh, the Bible, they've plagiarized, they changed the notes. You got up here. You've, you've made these type of pejorative claims with me. All right. I, I've, guys like you on this app or a dime a dozen. All right. No, but it is a claim. You are asserting that as to be true. And even if even if it was a, even if it was 100% true, even if it is 100% true, even if it is even well, no. So now you're going back. So now before before you said, "Oh, we're going to pivot to something different." And now you're going back. Okay, yeah, but so even if okay, okay. So even if it's the case, and that's 100% true, even if I granted that to you, that is still a truth claim. And the fact that you were even trying to get around the fact that that's a truth a, a truth claim shows that you you just stumbled into the Wrong life, my man. So we can we can pump the brakes. I'm trying to understand just on a human level. Yeah, so what let's talk. You keep on making views. pejorative claims. Terms. Like, oh, you're trying to get me into this court, bro. I'm just trying to understand your worldview. I'm not okay, so let's do that. With this, with this. Oh, let's oh, do these that. Are concerns I had growing up in the religion. These are my own concerns cool. I'm giving to you. I'm not trying to get so then let's, story, like, oh, I got you. There's 50 cool. people in here. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to, this is not, I'm not trying to debate, bro, you, you know, like. Okay, cool. Then let's talk in a way which is representative of that. Because the vibe I get from you with the language you're using, the pejorative nature you're using, is you that you're just trying to debate, bro, me. Um, yeah, so in a way that's uh, disrespectful or has a negative connotation, stuff like that. The way you're, you're talking and phrasing things, making these flippant slogans or these flippant remarks about like, oh, they're just changing the notes or, oh, then why do you need to, you know, why do you need to, you know, oh, um, why do I need to I read academic stuff? What's in the book, right? If, if I no, because book, you could so tell so me, here's what you... Today, so, so, for example, if I write a book, uh, a sci-fi book today, and it took a bunch of elements from Star Wars... Okay, and I'm not talking about like the war elements they took from Star Wars. And I said, hey, you know, I was reading the sci-fi book and it's got this Darth Vader in it. And I, I've been noticing there's a lot of similar, you know, <laughs> you know. That's not how you it. phrased it. No, come on, dude. You know, that's not how you phrased it. You did not get up here and say, hey, James, um, you know, I've noticed there are some similarities between the stories in the Bible and stories in other religions. I'm curious how you think about that. Similarities in a story isn't plagiarism, my dude. Like that is... I don't. I don't mean this in a way. Like, have you? I had this when I read yeah. the comment. It was in a comment section. I'm not gonna write it a whole. Like, yeah, you. Okay. Okay. So, so let's pump it. That. So let's let's do. Let's clear the slate, right? 
Um, I'll, I'll have a more positive attitude, t attitude towards you. I'll try to not be, you know, disparaging towards you. If I made wrong assumptions about your, your intentions, and do, I do sincerely apologize. Maybe, maybe I got, I got, uh, there was a communication issue. Um, maybe I, uh, I leapt to a conclusion. I will apologize for that. And I'll say, let's just clear the slate. Does that sound good? Yeah, it's all good. Okay, so good. I, I apologize for making assumptions about you. Uh, please forgive me. We'll, we'll move forward. With that said, um, why don't you take a second and think about what topic weighs on your mind the most, and then you and I can talk about that topic. You, don't have to, you can just take maybe 10 or 15 seconds and think about, okay, um, yeah, just take 10 or 15 seconds, and then I'll, I'll get a drink of water, and then we can go and talk oh, no, about I the mean, topic that's I mean, most on your mind. Just keep going on the, the concepts of evil, right? Like you would say <laughs> there's a lot of evil in the world, right? And you're saying that he has no, he's not aware of any of it, right? Uh, no, I didn't say that. I think that God okay, is so aware what, of the evil so in the world. Let's, so instead of me saying, me pointing to some evil in the world and you saying, well, he, he didn't know about that one because he couldn't. What are some evils in the world that you think he does know about and he is aware yeah. of? Yeah, so I think God is aware of every evil act that's ever occurred. So the question that you were asking earlier was um, about God knowing that a specific evil was going to occur um, before he created the being that created it. And so that was the idea that you're getting at, this idea that God is the author of evil because he created a being knowing that being was going to be evil. And what I pointed out is, according to my model of divine foreknowledge, I don't think God had that type of knowledge of that evil that was going to occur. I think he knew it was a possibility, but I don't think God knew for sure that it was going to happen. So now there's well, a second okay, question well, that you're okay, bringing up, say, which is, let's yeah. Let's just go on that. The possibility. Why mm -hmm. create a world where the possibility for that exists, right? Why yeah, create a because... World no, you can just go off that. So, I mean, I don't have to. No, I mean, yeah. If I, if I went further, it would add more points. I'd make it harder to go back and forth with. That's fine. Yeah, I, I'm down to uh, maybe keep our statement shorter, and I'll try to do the same, and you can keep your statement shorter, and then maybe that way we can um, build clarity as we go instead of the list of things to address piling up. So if mm -hmm. uh, if you feel like I start to talk too long and I start to build up too many points, then by all means, you also you can say, hey, let's clarify those things or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what I would say is that I think God wants um, a certain type of end goal from the universe. I think in order, when God creates beings or creates in pursuit of that end goal, I think that just a, a, a consequence of that end goal, of setting up the wall to, um, to progress towards that end goal, a consequence of that is the possibility of evil occurring. Um, so, for instance, I, to, I, I'll, I'll give an example to elaborate, and then maybe we can pump the brakes there. Um, I think that God wants a world in which his creatures um, are freely able to choose him, uh, to choose to have a relationship with him, are freely able to, um, free to do uh, good, and are able to make choices that have significance and able to have responsibility in their actions. And so if God really wants a world in which that can happen, a just logical consequent of that is that it has to be a world in which those same creatures are able to do something evil. And so God doesn't. God knows, hey, possibly these creatures are going to go bad, but I really want these creatures who can have this meaningful relationship with me. And I know that them possibly going bad, that's just uh, that uh, that comes with the territory. And He knows He can overcome those. He knows He can overcome those evils in the end if they do occur. And so God says, yeah, this is worth it. Me, you know, me going down this line is worth it. Gotcha. So he knows that these that these evils might occur, but he he wants you to still choose them in the face of those evils. Which is essentially what you're. So what I would say is, I think God knows that these evils will occur if He starts to um, actualize a wall that has this end goal that you know He desires, which is Him having this type of friendship with us, and I would say uh, sharing um, governance and rule over creation and, with and, Him. He. Mm -hmm. And and to the second part of that, and He wants you to choose Him, right? Other than the using your free will for evil. We can put it that way, right? Yeah. I think God okay, wants so us to use, use our that, free will. Yeah. Go ahead. So my question that would be, why did not, why did he not give a, a more clear indicator, right? About what? About his existence, right? Why so I think God this, has why given. Make it this, why make it this weird? You know, you even said yourself that his own book, the one book, isn't enough. You need, the way you put it, you need well, a, let's, let's, Can we pause there? Really Criticized me for not having a study in multitude of books, just trying to explain. Well, no, this let's, one yeah, book. so let's pump that back. So, yeah, so, so but how is wait, that so, being very clear? 
And yeah, yeah. So was no, okay, no, that's that's multiple points. No, we said we were going to try to keep it short. Let's let's keep it on okay, that point. But, right? I mean, it's, it adds on my point. And if it was very clear, okay, but no, but but I, I that's going to add okay, other stuff on. I, I need to adjust this section. So so when it came to you asked me the question is whether or not it's clear that God exists. Now I referenced and I asked, had you read academic literature addressing the philosophical topic of God's foreknowledge, what is entailed by it, things like that? I don't mm -hmm. hold to the position that. Um, every true proposition in reality is um, contained in the Bible. I, I don't know most. I don't know really any Christians who would um, maintain that position. And if you ever, if you ever come to a, a Christian who holds to that position, you can say, "Okay, tell me where the existence of Ford Motors is described in the Bible." It's not like Christians don't hold to that position. Yeah, um, rather, yeah, yeah. So the the idea here is. Um, why hasn't it God made it more obvious that he exists? And I would say, well, it seems like he's made it pretty obvious to me. The you overwhelming majority. What about like so a I think God, right? So, yeah, so, but here's the thing. Just cast it um, down into the sky at sunset. Why, why make yes. it this game of guessing, right? Why, yeah, but, why it's, not, but it's not a game of guessing. Hell, right? Well, let me, let me answer. Let me answer, the, let me answer your question. No, no, come on, back up. Let's, let me answer the question. Come on, no, let's back it up. Come on. Don't, come on, dude. You said you were going to engage with me charitably. We said we were going to keep our comment. I, I know, but we said, like, we said, okay, listen, what we'll try to do is we'll try to keep our comments short, and then um, we'll try to keep our comments no, short and address one, sure one point. Exactly from, I, I, right? I understand you, where you're coming from. You I get you. I know I get it. Let's it go back. Clear, right? Let's go. Yeah, I get you. Let's let's go back. Yeah, <laughs> Matt, I know. Um, yeah, so let's go back and address that claim of could God make it more clear. First off, let's talk about how clear is it, and then let's talk about, you know, why doesn't God make it more clear or things along those lines, right? So let's talk about how clear is it. The overwhelming majority of humanity is not, is not sitting here wrestling with the question of whether or not God exists. There is an extremely small probability, or so not probably, there's an extremely small um, portion or you know, a sliver of statistics, which is people who identify as atheists and they talk to, you know, say, oh, I don't know whether God exists. And I would argue that we have strong um, sociological data from the cognitive science of religion that indicates it's obvious to them too, and what they're engaging in is a type of mental muzzling of their intuitions. And I can, you know, I have a video I can reference to you on that in which I give specific data from cognitive science of religion in which they ask atheist questions. And when atheists are not allowed to censor their intuitions, their intuitions about looking at the world and things like that are comparable to the intuitions of a theist and thinking that, oh, this is teleological, this is designed in a certain way, so on and so forth. So I want to point out the, the, the premise of this argument, which is that all of humanity is just sitting here, like pulling out their hair, being like, oh, does God exist? This is not an accurate representation of humanity. Well, but let's go to your next question. A God. I'm talking about your God specifically, right? <laughs> Yeah. So now let's yeah. Because so let's go then into that second question. If if we just made it a little more clear, if he gave us a little bit better of a sign, you know. But here's the thing. I, I don't think I don't think that necessarily would. So remember, God could God could project something in the sky that says you know Yahweh, the God of Israel, exists or something like that. Now, is that going to lead to more people choosing to coming to a type of loving relationship with Yahweh? Well. I don't see any reason to think that um, that would necessarily be the case. I think that what God uh, wants to do, what God is working out through human history, is that God is teaching us and drawing us and you know showing us why we should come to have faith in him. Now, I would also point out that under my model of um, Christianity, under my model of how I, I, I see things, I don't think God is uh, one of the beings in heaven, but there are other beings in heaven. And so I think a lot of what is going on, and this is an idea I talk about in my book, The Devil, disbarment. I think potentially oh, God, one reason God, I do, I know, it's you almost like it money? I do, I know, it's almost oh, like God, I spent like I'm a lot of time gift. working on it. I was not aware yeah. that's what I signed up for, sir. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to buy my book. Someone grifting. Yeah, that's me. Everyone who sells a book about a topic is a grifter. You got it. I thought it was 60 people. I was fine with it. It is alive. A grift, but a grift with the book. Yeah. What are you selling it for? Uh, right now, it's uh, right now the ebook is like ten-ish dollars. But I'll say this: when uh, it'll probably in the future, I'm planning to do a a, a free. I'm planning to do like a, a free giveaway thing or a, a okay. discount uh, giveaway uh, thing uh, once it gets okay. on. Once it yeah, once it gets on. Um, once it gets back on, on Kindle Select, long story short, I have to delist it from other sites before I can technically distribute it and say it's uh, uh, put it on uh, Kindle Select. And so once I do that, I'm, I'm, I'm considering, I'm thinking about putting it up and saying, hey, like a free a week or something like that. Interest a little bit? Why would it be a conflict of interest? Most, most scholars... What you're pushing. 
Yeah, I, I, so one, I am, I, I do profit off what I push, um, but the ideas I express in my book, when I bring it up, I've, I pretty often tell people, hey, these ideas, here are other live streams that I've done with other Christian content creators in which I talk about these similar ideas, or here are videos on my YouTube in which I talk about these ideas. So I've said before, hey, go listen to these videos in which I talk about some of these ideas, and then if you want to know more, consider picking up my book. Um, I actually considered giving my book away for free when I, um, when I wrote it, and I've actually still considered that, even relatively recently, I've considered giving it away for free. The reason I don't is because there's this idea in marketing of, I forget the exact word it's called, of um, the effect of perceived value. And the idea is yeah. if you give something away for free or you make it really cheap, uh, a lot of people don't think it has value. So you can take that same thing, and you've been going from selling it from $5 to selling it for $40. Now everybody thinks it's better. Um, and so if my, I have this feeling if I, if I want people to take seriously my work and I'm giving it away for free, that might be counter productive um so if i if i thought more people would read it if i thought it was just like the, the same amount of people or more would read it if i gave away it for free um oh boy would i strongly would i strongly go back to that consideration um but yeah listen it's, it's normal for people to uh, especially scholars to write things and then to um you know write books and say hey like this is an area i've spent time in research writing and um here, here's, here's where you can go to, to know of this more in depth. Um, so I also, I will say, I have, I have about four people, I think, who are requesting to come up in the, uh, in the chat. And you and I have been talking for a bit. So I may let That's you go. Fair. Thank you for, uh, Matteo. Uh, thank you for the rose. Um, so yeah, I, I, if it's okay with you, I'll, we can end this here. I feel like we're kind of in oh, a, in a more chill place. Call out on the grift, huh? No, I'm fine. It doesn't bother me. And, and what you're doing right play? now, oh, okay. what you're doing right now, calling me a I'm grifter because I'm selling Bible, a book. Man. He's got you beat in Ohio. The sales. Oh, yeah. Bibles there are this be right hard, here, man. this right here is what I was talking about, about being pejorative and, and having a certain vibe that gives a, gives a certain well, disposition. Yeah, you're so you're... Uh, give me the point. Give you what point? One more question. Since, what point am I? Think, what point did I not you give you? I'm We've been talking struggling. for a bit. I have other guests. What point do you feel like I've dodged? I, I don't understand. Well, I don't think we've. I don't think we dodged, but I don't think we've really gotten to the end of like the, the point of like making it more obvious, right? Oh, okay, yeah. Do you want me to elaborate that on, on yeah, that? We can then? finish on that. We've been we've been trying to keep it respectful, so I'll keep it respectful. Yeah. So I, I mean, I would say that. One of the reasons we divulged from that point is because you started calling me a grifter when I mentioned that the idea I was going to well, tell you about is something I talked about in my book. You that you're selling anything on here? And that's a, yeah, that's because a that's not why. Oh, do you want me to answer this question or not? Do you want me to am, answer I'm your question saying, or not? You understand why I'm shocked by that, right? I don't know why you'd be shocked that I have a book. I told you I'm a doctoral. Like you understand, to get a doctorate in something, you essentially have to write a short book, right? No, so by in general, I know. I know I in know, general, I if know, someone's a, if, you know, a doctoral I'm student, to yeah. I think I'm just talking to someone who. Yeah, yeah, I do. Listen, if you think, listen, the amount of work that I put into my book versus the amount of profit I've gotten for it, if you, th if you think I just wrote that book to make money, and I'm like, oh, wait, this is my secret to getting rich. Oh, boy. Um, you are, you are mistaken. Okay, so I see people in the chat. 